In this section, we're going to talk about margin of error. We are in section 8.3 of your textbook. So let's begin by posing this one question. We want to know how precise is the estimator. Remember in section 8.2, we discussed about X bar being as a point estimate of the population mean mu. So question might be, well, how precise is this estimator? So I have a sequence of statements here that I have pre-written for you. So more specifically, when we say how precise is the estimator, here we're talking about X bar again, when we estimate mu. The answer to the question is margin of error. So what is this margin of error? The margin of error turns out to be the maximum error of estimator, in this case X bar, when we are estimating when we are estimating, sorry I dropped that we are, when we are estimating mu with certain confidence. And it simply indicates how precise the estimator x bar is. That's all the margin of error is. Okay. Now, uh, for short, a lot of people call it just the error of estimator. So margin of error or error would be used interchangeably. Now, in section 8.2, uh, 2 actually, not 8.1. In section 8.2, we looked at this formula, right? So this formula comes from section 8.2, okay? The formula we had was x bar plus or minus z alpha over 2 times sigma over root n. Now, uh, the right side of this formula, the right-hand side of this formula, which I have in the blue, this is what the margin of error is. So simply the error e. Now, this is how this error relates to precision of our estimator x bar. As the error increases, the precision drops of x bar drops. And as the error decreases, our precision increases. So they are inversely proportional, these two uh, variables. Now, this is how the margin of error relates to the length of the confidence interval. If I look at the length of the confidence interval, that would be from distance from x bar minus e to x bar plus e. I am over here right now. I'm over here. Okay. So this is what the confidence interval is. Now, the whole length is the distance from the lower to the upper limit of the confidence interval, which is made up of two margin of errors one to the right of x bar and the other one would be to the left of x bar so we can say that the length of the confidence interval is equal to twice uh, margin of error and if we divide both sides by two we actually get an expression in terms of e equals l over two so all this says is that if you know the length of the confidence interval you divide the length by two and half the length of the confidence interval is going to be the margin of error and it's really that simple that's a pretty simple section now since we talked about precision i just want to clarify something the delineation or the difference between what do we mean when we talk about accuracy of estimators versus the precision of estimators now this is not in your book so it's just kind of a um, extra additional knowledge that uh, i would like for you to have when it comes to the subject so here what i have done for you is i have two bullseye here okay now i want to recall that unbiased estimators are accurate remember we said x bar is an unbiased estimator of the mean mu because the mean the center of its sampling distribution is equal to mu okay well here's what these two bullseye are trying to illustrate so the one bullseye on the left uh, that's this bullseye this one on the left is looking at an estimator that is unbiased but it's not precise notice the bullseye of course is what we would like to have right we would like to hit the bullseye so this is where we want to be the center of the bullseye and of course, these are different shots we're taking at, uh, like here, here, I'm taking different shots at this. 
here and I notice I'm missing the bullseye but nevertheless they're all kind of surrounding the bullseye maybe on average of course one or two of them could hit it <clears throat> but again this is the idea of an estimator that is unbiased but it's not precise so precision has to do with variability of data points now on the other hand the bullseye to the right if you look at this one this illustrates an example of an estimator that is biased means it's missing the bullseye the one on the right side the bullseye is here the one on the right and it's missing none of these uh, shots are f fired and they're all missing the bullseye so this would be an example of estimator that is biased and that's why we don't like biased estimators notice how they're missing the target they're shooting at somewhere else but nevertheless they are precise they cluster together pretty tightly so what we would like to have is the best of both worlds we want estimators that are unbiased and we would like them to become precise which means this is what we would like to have now this bottom bullseye is the one that we actually are looking at now so right in here is the bullseye and notice how close we're coming to hitting the bullseye so the more fires we shoot um we're getting closer to the bullseye so here looking at the example of an estimator that is both unbiased and precise i just again want to give you that extra information it's not in the book but the, uh, oftentimes we may talk about accuracy of estimators versus the precision it's like what's the difference between them so hopefully i was able to clarify that now continuing on with our work um let's see what i have here what it reads is that let's see if we can improve oh, okay how can we improve the precision of our estimators well there are a couple of remedial actions we can take uh, one of them is to boost our sample size right everything good comes out of large sample sizes so one way is to increase the sample size and or depending on whether we can or not um, we could reduce measurement variabilities so those two remedial actions are what we can do in order to boost the precision of our estimators now that's all we want to talk about there now the next question we want to answer is this let's say we want to estimate mu okay which is the subject of chapter eight i want to estimate the population mean mu so the question might be well how large of a sample do i need in order to accomplish this to estimate mu well the answer to the question lies in margin of error okay now remember e is equal to the right side of the what's to the right of plus minus in the formula for confidence interval so this is going to be z alpha over two times sigma over root n in this equation if i solve for variable n using your algebraic skills um well next step i multiply both sides by square root of n and then i squared both sides of this equation and then divided both sides of the equation by n and i got the formula that you see for the sample size now in this formula for the sample size uh, that you're looking at uh, z sigma and e must be known in order for us to estimate the sample size and we'll see an example of this in a few minutes now one rule that we have to obey we have to follow when estimating sample size using a calculator is that we don't follow the usual rounding conventions okay so with sample size for us in this course and everybody in general we always round up with the sample size because it's better to have more than a few uh, so we always round up so a couple of example are made up let's say my computations for a given problem gave me sample size to be 23.15 in your algebra classes we round this to 23 if i round to the whole number right well in statistics we round this up to 24 which again is contrary to our usual rounding um, convention look at this one 18.76 this naturally rounds up to 19 both in algebra and in statistics so keep in mind again uh, in our work we always round up oops sorry i didn't want to do that we always round up in our work with sample sizes 
okay so just want to uh, point that out and let me fix that up we always round up okay and there you go so please keep that in mind as we go through now uh, let's go down and actually let's take a look at this exercise I'm going to do this exercise together <clears throat> now in this exercise this is the one that we actually did in previous section remember exercise number 34 so in that exercise we found the confidence interval and it's in statement of the problem we found the confidence interval to go from 456.4 to 608 okay we did this in section 8.2 now, part A says, find the margin of error by taking half the length of the confidence interval. Remember, E is equal to L divided by 2. Now, how do I determine the length of the confidence interval? Remember, to do that, you subtract the upper minus the lower limit, and then you divide it by 2. And if you do this, um, you should get 151. 0.6 for the numerator divided by 2 and that makes it 75.8 and that would be the margin of error using uh, confidence interval now realistically we don't have the confidence interval but again if we did this is how we can find the margin of error remember half the length of the confidence interval now in part B says use the formula with sample size 17 sigma 190 and the formula we have is z alpha over 2 remember that one z alpha over 2 times sigma over root n now for 90 percent again we did this in section 8.2 for a 90 percent confidence interval alpha is 10 percent half of alpha is five percent right and a z of 0 0.05 is 1.645 we found that earlier so we can write 1.645 times 190 divided by square root of 17 the sample size is 17 and doing so we're going to get exactly what we got in section 8.2 which is 75.8 so two different ways of doing this okay so hopefully you follow that we're done with that exercise Oh, by the way, what's the interpretation of this 75.8? That means the maximum error in our estimate when we estimate the average tongue flick. And I think when we did that exercise, the average tongue flick turned out to be uh, 532 or something like that. Whatever that number was in section 8.2, uh, that estimate of mu is off by no more than almost 76 tongue flicks every 20 minutes the maximum error in our estimation of mu is about 76 here and we are 90 percent confident about that statement so this is again the maximum error in estimating uh, mu that's what that is okay so just want to point that out okay now here's an example for sample size and let's say we really want to do the research that was done in exercise number 64. The question might be, well, how large of a sample do I need in order to estimate mu? And I change my confidence level to 95%. So we want to be 95% confident in our estimation. And I want to have a margin of error of no more than 30. This is the maximum error I'm willing to accept. No more than 30 tongue flicks per 20 minutes. And we're going to assume sigma to be 190 just like they have. Okay. So to do this now, I'm going to actually put that formula in motion, right? So the formula for this is going to be n is equal to, sample size is equal to z alpha over 2 times sigma over root n. Well, for 95% confidence interval, for 95%, alpha is 5%, half of alpha, 2.5%. And the Z of 0.25, again, we did this back in chapter 6, a Z of 0.25 is going to be 1.96. So that's the magic number that we need. Therefore, this is going to be 1.96 times 190 
divided by square root of oop, not the square root of a sample size sorry i have the wrong formula here i don't know what happened no biggie i'll fix it <laughs> this should actually be e it's z alpha over 2 sigma over e and then remember we will square that okay so this is going to be um e margin of error was 30 and then we're going to square it and uh, let's see using a calculator i did this and the number i got was 154.09 which is very darn close to 154 but remember for sample sizes we always round up always so we're going to choose a sample size of 155 that's the sample size we need if you want to accomplish the same thing they did that means estimating mu with our own confidence uh, level of 95 percent our margin of error our own 30 and of course taking their deviation of 190 and that is how this is done and i believe that's all we want to do in this section so again uh, hopefully you follow everything we did if not, please go back and, and read over the things that I have in this section and hopefully you'll be fine. I think you'll be okay. And with that, we're going to conclude uh, this section as well.